Have you ever wondered what a wedding planner thinks of the 2001 J-Lo movie, The Wedding Planner? Well, um, I'm here to help you answer that question. And don't you worry, we're gonna get into it. But first, my name is Katie Sauter. I am a wedding planner. I have a free wedding planning timeline linked in the description below. And I also will read your stories out loud every once in a while. I'm just not like it's every week, but frequently. And uh, check out the link in the description below if you wanna submit your own story for me to read. Don't forget to give a neck massage to that like button and say I do to that subscribe, but keep it PG for me, okay? But first, spoiler warning! I will be- some spoilers will happen. Just be warned. At the end, I will rate this video in two ways. Uh, how much I actually enjoyed this out of five stars, and then also out of five stars, I will rate how real is it to real life. If I could say the word real one more time, that would be- that would be something. Lots of nickels, right? Anyway, let's dive into the movie. So it opens up with quite possibly the cheesiest early 2000s song. I cannot play it because of copyright issues, but just believe me when you- just- just please imagine for me early 2000s. You know, there's like- you can just imagine the animation. Like, it's corny. And it's it's really, really corny also because like some of the lyrics are like, somewhere my baby waits for me. I should not be allowed to sing. It is honestly perfect and I love it so much. Like, yes, maybe it's nostalgia because I was born in 94 and like I was a kid in 2001, but like, yeah, I kind of like it. I kind of like how cheesy it is. And then it goes into little Mary playing with her Barbies, which is really cute. She's got like a wedding scene. So, you know, she's been wanting to be a wedding planner her entire life. That's basically what this scene says. And I really love this. I also played married life with Barbies, but I think that mine were not quite as cute. There's probably a lot more dinosaurs, you know, being like, oh no, we need to get married before the dinosaurs arrive. So that was probably more like what my childhood Barbie playing was like. So, but yes, a real life wedding planner definitely played wedding with her Barbies. <laughs> and more, so much more. Okay, so then it opens up to like an actual wedding scene and she's reassuring the bride. It's really sweet. Um, I have to say wedding planning is a bit of like unlicensed therapy sometimes because I am not a therapist, but sometimes you have to be like, hey, it's okay, we got this. You've got this, it's gonna be fine. Sometimes that that's honestly legit. I don't usually have to do that very much like right before they walk down the aisle. Like they're nervous, but they're like excited nervous, not like nervous nervous. It might be different with like celebrities, like what they're showing because she is clearly a high end luxury. She's like Whitney Houston is what she's, she's tossing around the name Whitney Houston. Like, yo, that's a lot, that's a big deal. But I do sometimes have to reassure new clients. I do want to take a moment to address the bow on the front of bride's dress. Like, that is a look, you know? I think that the bow is trying to tell us hello. So, hi. <laughs> I, I kind of love it and I also kind of hate it. So just, you know, pick your opinion. It's very, this feels very 90s to me. So then like immediately after the, the dress situation, she fixes one of the bridesmaids dresses by like shoving her hand down the woman's breast and like with a clothes pin, I guess. And I don't know what magic she just did. I want to know what that trick is to be honest with you. I don't think I would personally do that to anyone without their consent beforehand. Cause she's like, oh, what are you doing? And um, and then she's like, oh, thank you. And I think like that'd probably be most people's reaction, but I, I, uh, I don't, uh, I don't know. I, I would be nervous about doing that now. Life was different in 2001. So next, she's just kind of making her way to the ceremony space where the wedding is about to happen. The entire time, she is using a lot of acronyms, but she clearly has her shit on lock. I didn't just say that. I didn't just curse. I didn't. I didn't. And she, she is using an earpiece, which I also have one of those. I have like a little walkie talkie system that I give to like the DJ and all the people. You're not here for that kind of detail. That's kind of boring, but the earpiece is real. That is legit. I think the only thing I don't like is all of the acronyms, but I, so I don't, I do not agree with Elon Musk very often, but he does not allow acronyms in his businesses. He says no one should need a dictionary to be able to work at his places. I don't like agreeing, but I do with that. I do not like acronyms so it would not be me being like get the fov on the line kind of thing i no <laughs> no we are not getting the father of the bride we're not gonna call him the fob we aren't at least i'm not maybe other people are i just have an aversion to acronyms okay i've been scarred having worked at national labs and in government it's too many acronyms that no okay T that was a side tangent side tangent 
over. All right. So when she enters the space, I just immediately think, oh, wow, big money. That is big money right there. That would be really expensive. The trees, holy crap, the trees and the enormous amount of florals. That would be wicked expensive in today's economy. I would guess at least 30 grand. And I'm like, okay, that's just a ceremony. What does the reception look like? That is, oh. Huh. Can someday I plan a wedding like that? The fact that she then gets behind a TV screen is truly indicative about the money that is spent. This is not normal. This is not a normal thing. She's like, Penny, go to M12. We have a dark tower choking the AV. And it's like, I had to pause and rewind that because I was like, did I hear all of that right? I'm like really confused. <laughs> Again, this is like some, some secret code thing happening, which is dope it's so cool but it's also like that's not normal <laughs> that's not normal like i honestly wish that i was cool enough to have a code language everyone understood on the day of but uh i'm not just like the fob is mia is what she says next and then she has to go look for the father of the bride and what i find myself confused by is why isn't she the one queuing people or maybe maybe penny is doing it maybe i just don't see that but it is weird to me that she has to stop the flower girl from going down the aisle which like it's a fun moment don't get me wrong but i'm like that that wouldn't happen in real life. That's your system would have not let that happen because you've got the earpiece. Remember, you got the earpiece. Then one of the things that I freaking love about this scene is she finds the father of the bride on the steps, drunk, so like smashed. And she gets out like this crazy emergency kit and and just like sedatives. I don't even think that that's safe or legal. I would not be giving anyone medications where I don't even know what their current medical history is. I'm not like, I, I have a PhD, but I am not a medical doctor, you know? And I'm also just a wedding planner on the day of like, please like no surgery here. Definitely no sedatives, no sedatives that are on me, but it's so cool. I'm like, my thing that I carry all of my stuff in is super visible. It's definitely not tucked away behind this gorgeous blazer. Then the wedding ceremony starts with the song, Here Comes the Bride, which in my opinion is very overdone by now, which is definitely an opinion. Cause if you feel that you just love that song, like do not let me stop you. You do you boo, okay? But I, I do feel like there are newer, better songs for like that kind of piece where it could be more personalized and custom to you rather than something that's been done again and again and again. That's my personal opinion. The wedding planner, Mary, can then be spotted up above watching the ceremony which is something that like ugh, if I ever get the chance to watch the ceremony unfold I do it and like I I do cry like Penny next to her I'm pretty sure is crying and she's like Penny next to her is like tearing up a little bit and I'm like that's me that is me on the wedding day <laughs> Because I'm also like you form you form a bond with your couples and like they're not your friends But it's just it's such a happy moment if someone is crying. So am I I am I'm doomed it doesn't even matter if I don't know you. If I'm at a wedding where I don't know you, I'm going to be tearing up too. Later on, we learn that she is working at a brick and mortar, like giant wedding planning business. She has a boss. Vibe is totally chill. Devil wears Prada. I don't think that's really a thing anymore, but maybe in 2001 it was. If there's any um, older wedding planners who have been in the industry far longer than I have been, I would love to hear your perspective on that in the comments below. Like, is that real for 2001 because there wasn't as much internet i'm now it's pretty much just freelancers like i work out of my kitchen as you can tell <laughs> next she comes across a bride who has put on sunless tanning cream onto her face and it looks really bad and i i instantly go <gasps> as a wedding planner like ah! <laughs> but she just calmly is like a quarter cup of lemon juice half cup of salt and a loofah sponge scrub 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 and i'm like where do you come up with these solutions? And is, I don't think that's a solution. I've got to be honest. That just sounds like a recipe to end up with a red face on the wedding day. I think Hiram, skincare with Hiram would scream if he heard the solution, <laughs> i be honest. But it's so cool that she's just like, boom, I have the solution. Then like the boss that JLo is, she convinces her boss to make her a partner. This girl is fire. So much fun to watch. 
It is so much fun to watch. Oh, okay, cutting to the next wedding. Mary is feeding the best man his speech over like a little, her little earpiece again, which is super cool. And it's not something I have ever done before. If paid enough, I definitely would do that. I, I don't, would I do it? I think I would. I don't, I don't think I have an objection at this point to doing that, but that sounds complicated. And like, I don't have a nice little hidden earpiece that the best man could use. Fran Donnelly is watching, Fran Donnelly is rich, and she is what is giving Mary the leverage to be able to be a partner with her boss. It's awesome. And Fran Donnelly is watching and she is impressed. Mary ends up selling to the bride's family in a storytelling kind of fashion, like in the kind of way where it's just like, these are the splendid details. And it's phenomenal to watch. I wish I was that good at selling. Selling really does work best if you can tell a story. So she is killing it. Honestly, it's kind of aspirational. I watched this for the first time and I'm like, oh, where has this been all my life? I. Can, can I be a boss queen like this? I wanna be a boss queen. But she nails the sales call, obviously. Afterwards, she walks downtown and her shoe gets caught in like a manhole cover and Matthew McConaughey rescues her. This, this is important for later. It's true love at first sight, y'all. They pretty much end up on a date, which is a problem because Mary then finds out that he's actually the groom. He's Fran Donnelly's groom. He's the man that is destined to be married to another woman. And this is a problem. Mary goes straight to Penny, her assistant, and is like, help, I can't do this wedding. I, I like this guy and he lied to me. And she's upset, reasonably, I would be too. And I know that I would not want to do this wedding either. Penny then reminds her to not break the cardinal rule, which is don't fall in love with the groom. <laughs> I love this rule. I also feel like that is the cardinal rule. I don't think it's necessarily a spoken rule that I just, I, I'm speechless. Okay. Then throughout the rest of the movie, we'll find Mary in the car with the couple, riding horseback with the family, then going and picking out statues with the groom, and then also going and picking out flowers with the groom. That is not something that I do. If you paid me enough, totally. But I don't think that's pretty, that's really not normal nowadays. So most of the time we already have connections and we just like shoot like a text or a DM or an email to like a florist that we already know and already have a really good connection with and are like, hey, these are the florals that I am thinking of. Assemble it. I'm certainly not going horseback riding with them, but that would be cool. If anyone wants to invite me horseback riding, I would be thrilled. I would, I please give me carrots to feed the horses. I think one of the things that is uncomfortable, but not like that bad is that there is like the seeming rush for Mary to get married. And like, it's kind of, it's explained really well in the movie. Like her dad's like, oh, I was in an arranged marriage. And then I fell into love with the person. And she ends up kind of like being like, oh, okay, I guess I will marry this guy then. But I'm just like, you don't, I have to get married. Like you can be single for the rest of your life and still be happy. I don't understand the rush into marriage. Like that is something that is just like really nitpicky, but something that I wanted to mention because you, no one should be rushing you into marriage. You should want that. That should be your person. Okay, so what is my overall take on this wonderful rom-com I'm already revealing? It's five stars for me. I freaking loved this movie. <laughs> I laughed, I laughed. I highly recommend watching it yourself because I obviously didn't tell you the whole movie, but I, <laughs> I loved this movie. It's honestly the best rom-com I've seen in a while. I, I can't believe that I hadn't seen it until now. And, and, and I kind of regret that in a way, but I'm also kind of glad that I haven't seen it in a way because I think it would have given me some serious imposter syndrome as a wedding planner because that is really intense. And to be honest, it's not, not usually that kind of intense. It's also not like how it is today either. Like maybe there are certain ways that are definitely real for 2001. So this is getting into how close is it to real life out of five stars. I think that if for a regular wedding planner, I would give it three stars. It was honestly, there were things about it that were realistic. There were other things that were like, yeah, we just 
don't do that anymore. Like actually going and picking out flowers. Like we go and meet vendors, but not necessarily for individual couples. I think this might be more of like a celebrity wedding planner level. This might be much more realistic if your clients are paying 100K plus for their weddings, but probably not for a 20K wedding, more or less for a wedding planner. If you like this content, check out some of my other content here.